the captain said over the uh, over the intercom, we're now passing over Greyville. Mm-hmm. I think it was called. Um, I looked it on the map once. It's just a tin shop spot in the middle oh of yeah, nowhere. It's yeah. only so that was one of the things. One of the uh, greys, obviously, was um, uh, surveyor. Mm-hmm. But originally, uh, my great great grandmother, it's uh, what's his name, uh, Dudley Eliza Dudley, married James Gray, mm-hmm. and then then they fathered the, all these kids. Um, it's had big families in those days. But my grandfather came out with his brother. So there were two of them. Oh. Um, but my my grandfather was the mining engineer and he was the one who made all the money. What the brother did then? I presume he was in partnership. So we don't know that end of the family where they've gone to or done or no. So when you were talking about greys, there was that footballer grey a few years ago with a Greek classic name. Yeah, that's right, Troy Grey. Troy Grey. Your yeah. question was whether he would be a distant relative from exactly. the central Victoria there. Yeah, because Troilus was one of the grey children, mm. Troilus, uh, and they called him Troy. Mm. So it's interesting, yes, I remember now that he played for Brisbane, I think, didn't he? Troy Grey. I don't remember, was it Swans? Mm. Mm. One of the two was mm. certainly north of Victoria. Um, but yeah, I should have contacted him. But there are a lot of greys still living in uh, in the USA. They were related. There were one or two doctors and a judge. It's interesting. It was uh, a judge grey is now a member of Bowen Heads. And I said to him, I said, did you come from America, the USA? No, he said, but my wife did. <laughs> my wife's an American. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. And I told him why, that uh, mm-hmm. uh, my forebears came from America and there were several professional people and one of them was a judge. And I said, I just thought it might be you. Oh no, he said, I'm Australian. Anyhow, um, it's, uh, it's his name, Sam Gray. Samuel. Mm. So, uh, my memory's very vague because having been pissed off to the orphanage at the age of five and a half, a lot of the family history was, was lost mm. to me. Now Marjorie's the one who could tell you all this if she was willing to do it mm. because she's got some bad memories of our father because from what I gather he was interfering with her and not mm. uh, putting his dick up but obviously mm. having a fiddle and uh, she uh, has hated him ever since and Madge of course is the same mind because Marjorie told her all about it and Madge claims that she was fondled and had stuff as well but yeah I, I don't know anyway my first memories of Wedderburn were coming from uh, we were coming from Wedderburn Junction which was the junction of the railway line up to Sea Lake and Mildura and the Bendigo line Mm -hmm. and we were offloaded there and picked up by an old tour motor car and I remember sitting in the back seat of that with the rosy our cow running in front of the car along the country road with her udder swinging from side to side (laughs) (laughs) have you ever seen a cow lope along and its udder is going backwards and forwards um, that's my first memory. So that was going out to the soldier settlement block? No, that was coming from it. From it? See, I was born in Wedderburn and possibly in the hospital, I don't know. But then I was taken back to Nyaran, which is the property up in the, in the Mallee. And as you know, that was the soldier settlement block that my father was granted. 
But uh, that was the first soldier settlement scheme the government ran. And the idea was that they sold a square mile of Mallee scrub to the mm -hmm. poor bastards. They were expected to clear it and then farm it. And whenever they made money, they had to pay it back uh, for the cost mm. of the land to the uh, soldier settlement mob. And as you can imagine, clearing Mallee roots by hand is a laborious task. And then 400 year old stumps that are lying yeah, around. Yeah, and the big bastards. Mm. Uh, anyhow, he, he, when he eventually cleared a bit of land and, and, and then cr cropped it, as soon as the soldier settlement mob heard about it, they had their hands out for the money. And eventually it was just a no-go, uh, there's no way they could have made a living off it. Mm. Um, not only from the greedy government department, but from the mere fact that a square mile of land wasn't enough to... In that country, uh, yeah. ...support a family. So he had a second block, didn't he, next door? No, no. No, he didn't buy a second block. Didn't buy a second block. He sold. So that would have been how soon after the war he got the block? That was one of the 19... That was after you were born? No, before. See, I, um, I was born in Wedderburn because my mother would have come down to Wedderburn for the support mm. from the parents and, mm. and the parents and law. Um, and um, I would have been... I was born 26, so they would have moved up there around about 19, 17 or 18. Marjorie's eight years older than I am, or nine years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so she was a, a, you know, a grown child when, when they were on the farm. And then the others turned, came up, up Moira, and then maids and neighbours were twins. And then I I turned up the, f the fifth child as a boy, and that seemed to run in the family because uh, my grandfather Achilles had well he was the fifth child and and a, a boy, and the other four were girls. <coughs> and I'm not too sure of the the previous generation, but it was a similar sort of situation: more girls and boys. Um, so, what else can I tell you? Um, so, you, as a very small child, before you went to the orphanage, you were on the soldier settlement block, the whole lot of you? No, and by that time they'd walked off. Right. But when they realised they weren't going to make a go, that it wasn't going to be a viable enterprise, they walked off leaving the house and all the farming machinery on the property Wow! just walked off. So the farm machinery had been um, bought by my grandfather Achilles mm -hmm. to help them and uh, uh, they just they make, obviously couldn't make a go of it, they just decided to walk out. And the block was ultimately bought by the bloke next door mm -hmm. so then the, he had two square miles which was probably enough to make a living of. But when I came down to Wedderburn, I would have been three, three and a half, mm -hmm. maybe four. And that's when you went off to Adelaide at that stage? I know. Um, I was at the state school for about a year. So it would have been five or five and a half. That's when the marriage broke up or? Yeah, well, when he went berserk. Um, so he wasn't working then when he came off the property? No, he was on the dole. I remember that. He was getting eight shillings a week mm. on the dole money. And uh, he was given jobs around the, the town digging pits. And I remember him digging a, a hole or a, a drainage hole or something on the street. And he called me over and gave me some money. He said, go and buy me a tin of tobacco, uh, which I did. Mm. I, I would have been four. Um, and, but he was on the dole then and of course it was a, a great um, social um, no-no to be on the dole mm. but that was the start of the depression 
and uh, that was in 1929 so it would have been three, three and a half mm. when the depression started but the reason that we were sent off to the, the orphanage was that one night he, he obviously was suffering from post-traumatic stress mm. uh, having been wounded in Gallipoli and, and suffered the uh, the trauma of Gallipoli and sent to England, came back to Cairo or mm. Egypt, got his dose of gonorrhea and then was sick and miserable for months afterwards, eventually marrying my mother and then siring five children and then walking off the farm and then being on the dole and he, he he's you're very depressed mm. obviously. And one night he got a rifle and sat in the kitchen with the rifle over his knees threatening to shoot the lot of us. So Mom called Achilles who took him away and uh, as he was going apparently he said I'm coming back for the kids which they didn't know whether that meant that he was coming to take us or shoot, you. Or shoot us. So it was decided then to free our safety that the four younger children, that's Moira and Mavis and Madge and Mel, would go off to Morialta in, in South Australia and as far away as possible from Wedderburn. So we were put on a train, <laughs> this is an amazing thing when I think about it, four little kids, mm -hmm. I would have been five and a half, more, Madge and Mavis seven and a half, or seven, Moira would have been eight or nine, we were put on a train and sent to Adelaide mm. on our own. And we were put in one of these dog box carriages. No food, no water, nothing to drink. And I remember we turned up, the train stopped at Matoa Junction to hook up to the Adelaide train. And uh, there was a big refreshment room, uh, mm. cafe sort of style, a railway cafe, and the, the staff heard about us mm. and sent out a big bag of buns, or, you know, mm. about that big, with enough buns to feed the five of us, the uh, four of us. So um, we, we naturally hoed into that. We didn't get anything to drink there. I can't recall ever getting a drink on that trip. So mm. a bloody long way to go in those days. It would have been twelve to uh, twelve hours at least mm. train travel with nothing to eat or drink. They didn't think of that. Mm. And uh, anyhow, we arrived in Adelaide and were picked up by the Morialton mob and carted up to the orphanage. Mm. But that was the reason we went there. Yeah, for the safety. Mm-hmm.